I am always ready to do statistics. But before I'm ready to do statistics, I'm going to go shut the doors. It's lovely that I get to shut two doors every day. Every class period. And then it literally is every class period. This goes for him. I just, I wish I could be as loud. If I could be as loud as Richard's. You should do it one day. Yeah, do this together. You know what I would need is like a, a megaphone type thing. Yeah, see how a speaker that. I could use the microphone. Oh. Except for I hate the sound of my own voice. I hate it so much that it would drive me crazy. I'll do it. No, thank you. All right. All right, y'all. Uh, battery fan you ma- uh, you guys ready? Did you hear me say a battery fan you manufacturer is trying to improve the life of their batteries. The current mean lifetime of their batteries is 30 hours. They're trying to decide has it improved. Everybody good so far? Okay, and we are going to use a test to get there. So as we start thinking this through, we will have a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. Anybody got some ideas on what you think the null hypothesis should be? Mu equals 30, which would be the equivalent, the symbolic nature of they didn't improve. If they did improve, what would what could we say about mu? Did you say smaller? No. Okay. Because you know that it improved that they last longer. Yeah. Cool. Hey, you guys. If we, what would a type one error look like in this study? Okay, so essentially what's going to happen is we are going to conclude battery life has improved. Even though it hasn't. And what's the consequence of that? Arguably, with false advertising comes angry customers. Maybe somebody who's willing to switch from Duracell to Energizer. All right, what about type two? Battery life has improved, but we failed to reach that conclusion. And what's the, conclu- that, what's the consequence of that? And if they're trying to improve and they conclude that they haven't, what do you think the company's going to do? Is, they're just going to keep trying. And yeah, that will cost more money. Which one's more serious? All right. And you guys, if type one is more serious... If type 1 is more serious, we would want a lower alpha. Look at you guys. <coughs> My alternative hypothesis was greater than, which tells me I'm going to shade greater than. That blank page, there we go. Okay, so next we're going to check our conditions. The conditions are the same as for a T interval. So, is the random condition met? Yes. <coughs> About the normal condition? Yeah. How do you know? What does? It says normal. Where does it say normal? Yeah, that's saying that this graph is called a normal probability plot. 
We haven't talked about that. We have talked about them once or twice, but it was a really long time ago. So, I want us to be very careful to make sure we're communicating well. Yes, of course, the normal condition is met. But as we do this, which graph are we going to use here? <laughs> okay. And what that graph is a dot plot of what? Yeah, it's a dot plot of the sample. Shows mostly symmetric. And I'm actually going to argue unimodal pattern. Cool. What about independent? Is it safe to assume 15 is less than 10% of batteries at a plant? I hope so. Otherwise, I don't think that that um, plant is going to actually meet demand. Yeah. All right. Let's calculate the T statistic. I'm going to show you guys how it's done by hand. We're going to calculate the P value by hand. I think we all learned on the last test that Ms. Meister is capable of giving you a multiple choice question in which she gives you the statistic and not the raw data where you had to find the p-value. <clears throat> Number five. You guys, are you guys with me? And it caused some problems, so hence we're, you know. All right. So uh, a reminder that on your formula sheet it says the statistic, a, st a test statistic is equal to the stat minus the parameter over the standard error. In this case, what is our statistic? Uh, X bar. What is our parameter? It is the mean from the null hypothesis. It's the mean if the null hypothesis is true. The minute we use that, we are assuming the null hypothesis is true. Over the standard error of the X bars is S over the square root of N. So if I want to find the T statistic for this particular sample, we are going to do 33.9 minus 30 over 9.8 divided by the square root of 15. And I'm using a T statistic because the standard deviation I have is of the sample and not the population. One point five four. Cool. All right. Now, to calculate the p-value, we're going to think through what we know about our sample. In the distribution of t's, it has a value of 1.54. Now, when I look at this graph, I say something is missing. It needs, it, well, I, I start thinking it doesn't have a standard deviation, but T distributions don't have a standard deviation. They have degrees of freedom. And what is my degrees of freedom? And then which direction should I shade this? What was my alternative hypothesis? Which is this way. Are we good? Now, before we would use normal CDF, what do you think we want to use this time? There's a TCDF in that distributions menu.
What are we getting? Great. <clears throat> you guys, what does that p value really mean? Close. You're very, very close. Nope. Alpha is the probability of type 1. Okay. So what does this mean in context? If the true mean is 30 hours, I'm going to do it at the true mean battery life because I wanted to do this in context. The probability... We could get a sample with a mean of 33.9, and this is the part you were missing, Ben, or higher. That is 0 0.073. How are we feeling? All right. Guys, what conclusions can we make? Well, what did we decide alpha should be? We said, like, hey, type 1 was more serious. Maybe even 0.01. Then we'll use 0.05 is fine. If you use... So, since 0 0.073, I'm pretty sure that's bigger than 0 0.05. We fail to reject... Therefore, we cannot conclude that the true mean battery life has improved. Because they did. It's not even to confuse you. Each one of those actually says you can move forward, right? Like, so here's what I see when I look at this one. When I look at the box plot, there's no outliers. And it doesn't look super skewed one way or the other. Because one, one section, like we have a, a condensed section maybe right here, but nothing looks super stretched. Okay? Now... Um, do you guys, does anybody remember the normal probability plot? It's the, like, residual There's a difference, that, that's not with this, this is not a residual plot. Uh, no. Okay, so here's the deal. Your y-axis is the predicted z-score, if normal. Okay, it is the, z so do you guys remember how, like, the 30th percentile has a z-score? And the 95th percentile has a z-score. And the 90th percentile has a z-score, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Is everybody with me? So. Oh. Oh. oh God. It's so close. Right so close. I think we need to expand the box a little bit. No, <laughs> yeah, the, the failure. The failure side needs to be. Can you need the whole white one? <laughs> Okay. Are you with me that each and every one of our data values has a z-score? Or has a percentile? A percentile. So essentially, 
What this plot does is it puts the actual value up against the z-score if it was normal. And so the closer they follow this line, the more normal it is. So because there's a mostly linear pattern on this plot, I'm also quite comfortable saying that that sample is normal. Is that line R squared or whatever? No, not at all. What is that? That is the line. That's the line as if the z-scores were perfect. The z-scores match. So like for instance, the z-score on a normal distribution of the 90th percentile is one point, the 95th percentile is 1.6, 4.5. No, that's like. That it, it's the middle 90%, but the 95th percentile, oh, okay. yeah? So one of the, whichever, like, so if I go to 1.96 on the y-axis, it should, it should correlate with, on the line it'll correlate with where the 95th percentile should be. Like the, 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 the line is just like, so that the z-scores match. I don't, I don't know if it's like camera or what, I don't know. Like no, but yes, and then no. But like there's no, I don't know what that thing does, okay. You're ruining my video. See, look what you did, Blake. This is all on you. Nope, it's all your fault. Okay. Can we move on now? Great. Let's, um, let's look at this next example. Some lovely reminders of some things. Um, hey, does anybody remember the rules for outliers? Uh, Two standard deviations or... Okay. The two standard deviations rule typically applies to when we have kind of like a symmetric, well-behaved population or sample. Do we know what the shape of this sample is? No. So we're not... We're going to use the IQR rule because that applies in all settings. Um... But you're not wrong that two standard deviations is also kind of a, a rule we could follow. Hey, you guys, what's, what is the IQR? So that would be, in this case, 34.115 minus 29.990. Guys, I'm not very good at numbers, so I'm going to need some help with that. Four point one two five. All right, and then the IQR rule, we said 1.5 IQRs. What is that from? 1.5 IQRs from the each, either Q1 or Q3. So if it's too far from Q1, it's too small, right? So we'll do Q1 minus 1.5 IQRs, which in this case is um, 29.99 minus 1.5 times 4.125. Twenty three point eight zero two. Hey, you guys, do we have any low outliers? How do I know? My lowest value is not smaller than that value. Okay, and then we're also going to do Q three plus one point five IQRs, which would be thirty four point one one five plus one point five times four point one two five. It's going to be 40 and some change. Okay. And you guys, my maximum is smaller than that, so we have no outliers. Lovely. 
Wasn't this a fun little quick opportunity to review? I love giving opportunities for you guys. I don't. Yeah. Wait. You're processing. I get it. Okay, Seth. I'll consult Teddy. Hey. I need to see it. It's a, it's so, crazy. Something right. is an outlier if it's not low or if it's lower than this value. Yeah? Oh, okay. yeah okay. And since my minimum is not lower than that value. And then vice versa for the. What I said. That's right. That's right. I agree with Seth. All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and ask, do these data suggest that from one year to the next, the mean weight of the pineapples has changed? If you read the um, initial blurb at the top, the whole idea is that this pineapple farm in Hawaii, which makes me think of like going to the beach, which actually sounds quite pleasant, like a nap on the beach sounds amazing right now. Um, but w w instead we get to be in staff class, which is even so much better. So um, we're these. <clears throat> so it's basically saying in, in a previous year, the mean weight was 31. We want to know, has it changed since they've added this new irrigation system? <coughs> What's my null hypothesis going to be? It's the same, which would mean the true mean is 31. We will. So the technical logic goes like this. To test these hypotheses, we should use this test. So theoretically, you're supposed to know the hypotheses first. But it doesn't really. It's not going to make a difference one way or the other. All right. You guys, what, what should my alternative be? Why am I less confident about this one? It's closer. Underhand versus overhand is an interesting offering this year. Oh, wow, goodness. <laughs> I'll hit it. I'll shoot it for me. Put two failures down for that. That's two. Dunk it. Dunk it. Well, you reach it. Bounce it off Landon's head and into the trash can. You guys, what's my alternative? Not equal to 31. It's constantly making fun of me. You guys, what's Mew? Oh my gosh, this is, you guys, and if this is the case, if these are hypotheses, what would be the appropriate procedure? A one sample T test for you. Okay. Conditions. Let's start with the, were we given a random sample? <clears throat> As you guys noticed on my quiz yesterday, me putting a typo on a quiz is not that hard to do. <laughs> Can I get candy for being the first person to no. notice that? No. I was the first person to go to the teacher, though. You guys, what about the normal condition? Yeah, sure. It, N is equal to 50, which in fact is greater than or equal to 30. Independent? Uh, 
Again, if a pineapple farm only gets 500 pineapples, they're in trouble. <clears throat> okay, next. Okay, we already know n equals 50. What else do we need to do? Okay, and remember, if you put it in the calculator, if your calculator asks you for it, you need to write it down. So stat, error over to test. Hopefully you guys can find the one that would work for a t-test. It's called t-test, yeah. And, and then um, what we have here are summary stats. So we're going to highlight stats. Because there is a z-test for mu. That is the z-test for mu as opposed to the z-test for p. Hey, guys, what am I going to put in for x bar? 31.935. Great. What about s? 2. What? 394. Great. N was 50. And then you're going to give me the T and the P value. You guys, what are we getting for T and P? 2.76. Yes. So your T statistic was 2.76, and your P value was? And guys, what if instead we had chosen our alternative hypothesis to be greater than? What would my P value be? Point, point 0.004. Did... Landon, did you use 2.394 or um, 0.339? Okay. I got, I got a T value of 26. Uh, if I were to guess... Oh, you. Yeah. Oh, that's like eight. Oh, I'm not changing the count. We good now? Okay, since 0.008, this is less than 0 0.05, we can we can reject the null. Therefore. We can conclude the true mean weight of the pineapples has changed. But we don't know what we just know it's So, we... <laughs> yeah, but you're not going to say that. If you're all turn... Like, it's really, really weird um, because you end up with a lower p-value for a one-sided test than a two-sided test, which in and of itself is kind of weird when you, think, when you start thinking that through. You're more likely to reject for the stronger piece of information that it is, in fact, greater than. But that's how it is. All right, important question, you guys. So we just concluded that the mean weight has changed. Can we conclude that that new irrigation system is what caused the change? No. 
Why not? It wasn't in the spirit. Maybe the this was not randomly assigned to having irrigation or not. Right? What are some confounding variables from one year to the next? Rain. Weather. Bugs. Soil quality, right? Because, like, from one year, if they didn't do anything to replace the nutrients in the soil, that could cause issues or whatever. Okay? So, we still, like, this is just, the goal of this question is trying to get to the, do you understand that just because something is different doesn't mean causation? You can still get a significant difference without um, cause, like, we can say it's changed without saying something caused that change. Okay? So, I don't know, whatever you're laughing at feels inappropriate. I have no idea. <laughs> I've never heard of a pineapple monster. But weren't we talking about pineapple in fourth period? <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> that we weren't late? <laughs> This then she would have missed her most important <laughs> class of the day. <laughs> you guys, um, I'm done.